What's up, YouTube? It is 12.20 in the morning right now, and I'm going to knock out a few questions that I got on my Q&A post on Instagram. So I'm going to do my very best to answer the questions, and I uh, hope you enjoy. All right, first question, what supplements do you take? Well, funny story, when I first started lifting, right, like in my first year, I literally thought that the more supplements I have, like the more results I'm going to get. So I had, I'm going to try to find a picture, but I had it as, I probably had around like 30 to 40 supplements, like every single vitamin I could possibly get, like creatine, glutamine, like amino acids, all that, like you just, I had literally had everything. Then I realized later on that like, that's really just not necessary. So right now I'm just simply using whey protein, creatine, a multivitamin and a pre-workout. So that's just four things. So yeah, that's my, those are my supplements that I'm using currently. In your third year of your transformation, did you only do deadlift, squat, and bench? Um, no. From the very beginning, since I started lifting, I always did uh, bench press and squats. I always had them in my routine. And I'd say about one and a half years into training, that's when I really, really started focusing on the three lifts and the squat, bench, the deadlift, and really try to bring them up and achieve progressive overload on them. So yeah, in the beginning stages of my lifting, I just did benching and squatting without like any perks. I just come in, those would just be two movements that I did. But now, like I'd say like one and a half years into training, that's when I really started focusing on those three lifts and took them very seriously. All right, next question. Hi, your abs are great. How often do you work on them per week? I actually stopped doing direct core work. I'd say about roughly a year ago. I used to always like do abs at the end of my workout. I do some cable crunches that were on Jason Blas program. But I'd say now I just I just simply I don't remember the last time I did any direct core work. I just I get all my core stimulation through squats and deadlifts. So yeah, just I just don't do it, yeah. Okay. How has training affected your social life and in school and what do you do to get your meals in while in school? Uh training has affected my social life positively, I'd have to say. It's increased my confidence, it's helped me build my character and just really learn a lot about myself. And when it comes to school, how I get my meals in is that the day before, I have this thing, it's called like the six pack bags lunchbox, I'm sure you've heard of it, it's like a website, it has, like sponsors athletes and it's like made for like people like bodybuilders and like fitness athletes so they could, you know, carry their food around everywhere they go. So yeah, I just have one of those bags and just the day before school, I prepare a few meals, I'll make a few drinks, I'll put some vitamins in there and I'll just bring it to school and yeah, I just like eat food throughout class if the teachers let me and lunch in the study hall. And, yeah, basically, that covers my school eating regimen. Current weight and body fat percentage. Also, what is your workout routine throughout the week? Um, my current weight right now is, I'd say, one. it's like 185 in the morning. My weight's actually, it's not really been going up that much, and I've lost a little bit of weight recently due to bad eating habits. So, yeah, like in the morning, that's my weight, and the heaviest point I'll reach in my day is probably around like 190. And... My workout routine throughout the week, currently I'm on a push-pull leg split, so it'll be, no, it's legs, push-pull, legs, push-pull, so that's six days a week, so that's currently what I'm running. When do you start Blaha's program? Have you ever tried any others besides his in the strength program? Uh, throughout my sophomore year of high school, I essentially ran Jason Blaha's program that year, and I started about three months into that year, and I ended his program the very last day because... I wanted to go on a strength program and I wanted to start it in the summer because in the summer I'd be getting sufficient sleep for my central nervous system that I wouldn't be getting that amount of sleep during the school days, like in the school week because I just it's unpractical for me to get eight hours of sleep then. So yeah, I essentially ran Jason Blas program to the very end of sophomore year and in the summer that's when I started doing strength programs and stuff and I never went back to the Blaha program. Alright, here's a good one. How many days a week do you lift and do you ever work a certain body part twice a week? Well, like I previously mentioned, I'm on a legs push pull, legs push pull split. So yes, I do train my muscle groups twice a week and this is essentially how the routine works. For the legs, the main lift that you're doing for that day is squats. For push, the main lift you're doing that day is bench. And for deadlifts, the main thing you're doing for that is, I mean for pull, the main thing you're doing is deadlifts. Now. Every single workout starts off with that big compound movement that it's appropriate for that day. And you have to come in with progressive overload in mind. So let's say on a given day, let's say it's let's say it's a pull day, right? 
and the program says you have to do a seven by three today, you have to know, okay, I'm doing a seven by three today. You already have to have a weight planned out in your mind that you think that you're gonna get that you haven't gotten before, that's progressive overload. You come in, you go hardcore powerlifting mode, you hit those numbers, right? And then after that, that's when you do fun accessories like bodybuilding hypertrophy style workouts afterwards. Because a lot of people have a misconception that I only bench, squat, and deadlift. Well, that's, that's simply false. Those are the main compound movements that I do and I focus on. And I do all the fun hypertrophy stuff afterwards. But yeah, that's essentially how my routine goes. What do you do when you're cutting? Well, I've never intentionally gone on a cut in my life. I've been lifting for three years. And for the whole three years, I've had... I've been trying to stay in a caloric surplus. Now, that doesn't mean I actually have it in a caloric surplus because for me personally, I have like a very, very, very poor appetite. So it's hard for me to get calories in. But most of the time I am in a surplus, but there are times when I get extremely, extremely, extremely lean. Like I have been at least lean. It's simply due to just poor eating habits. I'm not intentionally going on a cut, but that just happens for me from time to time. But yeah, I've never like on purposely went on a cut. It just kind of happens sometimes. Like I'll miss a few meals, I'll not eat that much for a week and I'll just get really, really lean. So yeah, never gone on a cut before. What types of sets slash reps were you doing to start out to gain size so quickly? When I first started out training, and this is going to the very, very beginning, I had absolutely 0% clue what I was doing, but the thing is I thought I did right, I thought I knew everything. But what I did was I just went in the gym and I had moderate volume workouts, but I would always go like, I would be in the eight to 12 rep range and for legs, I do like in the 20 rep range. But knowing what I know now, it doesn't really matter for hypertrophy specifically for an extended period of time. It doesn't matter if you do really low reps or really high reps. So what matters in is how much total volume you get in, how much total volume you get in because that's essentially, that's what matters for hypertrophy. And if you have a very small period of time to work out, well then really high rep ranges are more optimal. But if you have plenty of time, you could achieve just the same amount of hypertrophy doing low reps. So it just simply boils down to the volume. What are your arm measurements and how tall are you? I am six foot two and a half and my arms are a little over 15 cold and 16 with a pump. I've been in a surplus and continuing progressive overload, seeing minimal gains. How do I maximize them? Well, if you're achieving progressive overload and you're eating your caloric surplus and you're still not making the gains, well, one big thing that can be influencing it is sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, your body's not going to be able to recover. Your central nervous system is not going to be primed. You just you're not going to feel as good, your appetite's not going to be as good, and you might think that you're getting the calories in, but that you're telling yourself you are, but you're really not. So, yeah, that's one thing that I'd really make sure that's on point, sleep. It's a very big thing, and I, me personally, I really need to get enough of it too. Can you share with us the program that Elliot wrote for you? Absolutely not, you can forget about it. No, I'm fucking kidding. Yeah, I'll just leave the, I'll leave the two programs that he wrote in the description box, and the first one is going to be the one that I, the one that I ran first, and the second one will be the one that I'm currently on. Do you get sore after all the workouts? I see you doing the same workouts all day. Wouldn't your body get used to it if you still get sore? How do you do it? Because I tried doing the same workouts and I didn't get sore because I'm used to it. Well, for me, let me put it like this: once your body adapts to something, it's not going to get sore and. If you're consistently getting sore when you're training, that's not a good sign. That means your body's not adapting. You're getting probably too much volume in or you're not recovering or something. But like all the bros, see the bro myth, oh, if you're not fucking sore the next day, you're a lazy piece of shit. You didn't fucking train hard enough. You're a failure. Like, no, it's, that's, that's not how it works. You don't really want to be sore. If you're like, in the middle of a training program, a well-written well program, once you've adapted to the volume, you shouldn't be sore. But... If you are sore, it's not a big deal. Like, for example, if I'm doing something that's really low volume, like the first powerlifting program that I ran was relatively low volume, right? And then when I went into the second program, it was really high volume. I remember the first day was a 4x10 squat with a heavy single, followed, followed by a static hold, followed by 3x20 leg press, 3x10 quad extensions, 3x10 hamstring curls, something by some quad, like calf raise and like some wall sits. 
literally the next day, I could not move. I was absolutely crippled. I needed a wheelchair. I just did not know what to do with myself. I was just so goddamn sore. But about two weeks into that program, I adapted and I was fine. So that's why you're not getting sore because you pretty much adapted to your training body. If you can go back in time and give yourself one advice, what would it be and why? Oh, God. Um, well, if I can go back in time, I'd give myself, I'd literally, I would sit myself down for two days straight and literally just, I have a lot of things I would tell myself, but if I just had to pick one thing, just one thing that I could tell myself that I would tell myself back when I started lifting three years ago, it would be something along the lines of, don't just listen to anything anybody tells you because before I'd have the mentality that like if someone's in really, really good shape, right, and they give you some advice, that means they're right because they're in good shape, right? And if someone that's like really small and doesn't have that good of a physique or isn't that strong gives me some advice, oh, it's probably wrong. They probably don't know what they're talking about because like they don't look good or whatever. That's just simply a the absolute wrong mindset. This is a horrible way of looking at things because – you shouldn't base base your knowledge and what people tell you based on like how they look or their authority figure, right? Let's just say, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger came up to me, right? And he told me that the best way to grow your biceps is do tricep pushdowns. Does that mean it's right just because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, that just because he told me? So it simply doesn't matter who tells you what. What you should use to dictate whether advice is good or advice is bad is based on the evidence behind it. So that's simply it because anybody could tell me anything. I could go to the gym and like the biggest guy in the gym could tell me like, ooh, this is what you do. That doesn't mean it's right. That's simply, that's not how you should look at things. You should always look at the evidence behind it. Look at the evidence behind what people tell you. Think for yourself and yeah, just that's how you should be made. That's how I would, that's what I would tell myself on how to make decisions because I literally, if someone said something and I like looked up to them, it was absolutely correct there was nothing anybody could tell me about and that's that's just an immature wrong mindset so yeah i tell myself something like that what do you think about lane norton's fat program um i've never actually looked at lane norton's fat program but what i can tell you is that i'm a very very big lane norton fan like i i have a lot of respect for him he has a phd he's an elite power lifter he's one of the most intellectual people I know, just a really smart, really fucking cool guy. Never actually seen the program that he wrote, like this specific program, but you can bet your money that it's pretty good. I highly doubt that it's bad. So have you ever had a lack of passion or have ever lost motivation? How do you stay motivated? Phases of me losing my motivation and it's like losing my passion. When they do happen, it usually happens because I just tend to get a little bit lazy over time. Let's say, let's say I'll get through a phase where that happens, right? And I'm like noticing, wow, like I'm just, I don't get that feeling. I'm not, I'm not like super excited about training. Like my workouts really, really aren't that good. What I'll do when that happens, like I'll stop myself, right? And I'll go back to the drawing board. I'll reassess. Okay. Like why am I training? Like I'll like go deep down. I'll really think about like, why am I doing all this, right? And then I look at all the variables that I need to make it happen, which is simply sleep, nutrition, and how macro training goes. And usually one of those variables, at least one of them is off. And that's why I'm feeling kind of sluggish, like loss of motivation, loss of passion, etc. So I'll go back to the drawing board. I'll find the problem, right? I'll make, I'll fix everything. I'll make like a better game plan and I'll just simply restart it again. I'll go into it with a lot, I'll go into it with a lot of discipline. That's how I handle those situations. Now, let's say everything's going fine and I'm in the middle of a work. I mean, I start a workout, right? And I know it's like, wow, this is a really shitty workout. This really fucking sucks. Like, I'm just really not strong at all. There's no chance I'm hitting progressive overload. I'm just like, not focused. I don't, I don't really feel that good. When workouts like that happen, when I lose my motivation in them, and simply regardless of my motivation and regardless of how much effort I'm going to put in, I just simply, I'm not strong that day. Situations like that, that's when I simply cut my workouts. Like, let's say this is where my current base is. Like, let's say four weeks ago on a six by five bench, I hit this number, right? And I come in four weeks later to do that same workout. I'm going to try to achieve progressive overload. So I'm going to try to hit someone around right here. 
like a higher number. And let's say I can't hit that number, right? I can't even hit what I hit four weeks ago, and I'm probably somewhere around right here. That's a situation where I just I'm not I don't see the point in doing that workout because I'm simply not achieving progressive overload. I'm just like wasting my time, and I'm not gonna like I can't get excited to train with a sub maximal or a regressive overload weight. I guess is what you call it for me. I just I just can't do that. So a day like that, I just cut the workout right there. I just go home, forget about it, like eat, sleep, and I come in the next day and repeat it. And that's that's how I go about handling those situations. In your opinion, which of the body parts take the longest to grow? Well, this simply, this depends on the individual because for some people, I mean, this is different for everybody, like one person's biceps might grow extremely fast and disproportionate to all their other muscle groups in their body on a balanced program. And someone else's biceps can be absolutely virtually non-existent and their calves can just blow up for no reason on a program. It's, it simply boils down to genetics. And after about a year of training, like on a good base, on a good program, that's when you'll develop a base after that year. And that's when you could see, okay, wow, on this program, my legs just got really fucking big. Like they just blew up. And let's say my delts, my shoulders, they just, they stayed, I mean, they didn't grow as fast as everything else. That's simply due to genetics, most like the overwhelming majority of the time. And once you find out which muscle groups don't grow as fast in relation to all the other ones for you, that's when you could throw an extra volume, you could hit it harder, you could find more exercise to do for that. So, yeah, that's simply why certain muscle groups take longer to grow, and that's what I would do about it. <laughs> this is a funny one. Are you stronger than Quinn Vitale? No, I am not stronger than Quinn Vitale. Not yet. First 17... I mean, for another 17, work into aesthetics, answer this. What kind of diet are you repping? What do you think about Ziza's 50-carb-a-day diet? Um, I'm pretty sure Ziz ran a 50-carb-a-day diet when he was cutting. And also, he was on a gram of Trembolone. So, I mean, if you want to hop on a gram of Trembolone, you could... Huh. I don't think your diet's going to matter at that point. Just That's just so much fucking Trembolone. It just doesn't matter. But if you're natural and you're 17 and you work for aesthetics like I am, I just know a 50 grams of carbs a day, I just, you literally, you're going to be so flat. You're just going to feel awful. I mean, unless you're morbidly obese, like if you're morbidly obese, then I'd consider doing this. But for the average 17 year old, I would not, I would definitely not keep your carbs that low, whether you're cutting, bulking, like whatever you're doing, that's just, that's simply way too low. What was your bench press one rep max when you started? It's funny, I remember the, I very clearly remember the very first day that I actually got a gym membership. It was a Wednesday, right? I come in to get my membership, and I, I hit legs that day, right? It was my first time in the gym. I just never been in that environment before. I go to the squat rack, I'm like squatting backwards, I'm like facing the wrong way, but yeah, I hit legs that day, right? But I've been hearing a lot about the bench press. Like I was reading, like, oh my God, the bench press is a crazy muscle building exercise. So I was really tempted to try it, right? So at the end of my workout, I went on the bench press. And um, when I got my membership that day, I was with one of my friends. So me and him going on the bench press, literally never went on it before. Just all I knew was that, okay, you hold the bar. Like it's like something like this, right? You like put it down like somewhere on your chest and kind of like got to push a little bit. Then like you got to make sure it's locked out. That's pretty much all I knew at that point. And... I think I got two tens on each side, which is 85 pounds, I believe. I think I got that like like one to two times, I think, around there. So, yeah, my max was probably around 95 pounds when I very, very first started, like the first day. How many hours do you sleep a day? Um, of course, you're supposed to sleep eight hours, right? That's ideal. That's what everybody should be doing, but realistically... For me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people, that's simply not the case. For me, like on a serious note, I probably get around six to seven hours of sleep a night, right? And if I get, if I'm like in the six hour mark, right, if I'm around there, that that means then I'll take a nap after school before I train because otherwise I just, I simply just forget about it. I'm not going to be able to train that day on that much sleep. But if I'm seven hours or more, then I could definitely... I could get a workout done without a nap after school in the, in those conditions. But yeah, 
I probably get around six to seven hours of sleep. Some nights I get five. We don't talk about those nights, right? So let's say six to seven. And yeah, I'm working my best to get eight. This summer, though, I'm going to be getting shit loads of sleep. So yeah, this wraps up my Q&A video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm going to be doing way more in the future. So if you didn't get your question answered, it's like no big deal. There's going to be a lot more coming. So yeah, um, see you guys in the next video.